I'm going to hit record so you may hear an audio alert. Or Marlene, I'm going to ask if you could either give me permission or if you could hit the record button. I already started. Perfect, thank you. All right, good evening everyone. Um, my name is Nicole Malika. I am our Director of Enrollment and Retention at Crystal Ray Boston. I am so thrilled and happy to have you all join us tonight. Although we do prefer in-person and live events, I hope that this virtual event is the next best thing and allows you to get um, a better sense of who we are as a community at Crystal Ray Boston. So um, before we begin with the program, as is tradition here at Crystal Ray, we will begin with prayer. Uh, so maybe all remember that we are in the presence of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord, today we pray for clarity and truth. Clarity so that we may clearly convey all of the incredible, joyous, and important works being done in this building and throughout this community by the students, faculty, and staff of Crystal Ray Boston. We pray for truth so that these families can make the best choice for their son or daughter that they find a school community that not only educates students, but makes them feel loved and valued as well. We ask this in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. At this time, I'd like to introduce the other members of our mission staff, who you'll become very familiar with over the course of the application process. So we'll begin with Marlene, who will introduce herself, followed by Nancy and Fred. Uh, Marlene, I'll let you um, kick off. Hi everyone, my name is Merlene Villa. I'm the admissions coordinator and I'm very happy to be here with you all and I'm so excited for you guys to learn more about Christa Ray. Welcome, my name is Nancy Robinson and I'm the admissions operations manager and you will usually hear from me when I am ready to schedule an interview with you and I will enjoy working with you. Thank you, Marlene and Nancy. I know Fred, um, Mr. Laporte will be joining us tonight. Um, so if he gets on later, we'll um, have him introduce himself at that point. Um, but at this time, I would just like to give you a brief introduction of Crystal Ray Boston. We'll get to meet some of our community members. Crystal Ray Boston is a Catholic high school exclusively serving families of limited economic resources. We offer regular, rigorous curriculum, a unique work study experience in the support of an inclusive community. We prepare our students to succeed in both college and beyond. We focus on our core values of dignity, perseverance, growth, and generosity. So that being said, it is my honor to introduce Tom Ryan, who serves as our principal here at Crystal Ray. Tom? Thank you, Nicole. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. Great. Thank you. Well, good evening, and we're fired up you're here and so excited that you're able to join us this evening. My name is Tom Ryan, and I am the have the privilege of being the principal of Cristo Ray Boston. So last year's graduating class, we're able to gain acceptances in some of the finest colleges and universities in the world. They include Notre Dame, Dartmouth, Boston College, and the UMass system. On top of this, they received over $10 million in scholarships and financial aid. Those are all great factors, but why CRB? Why should you choose CRB? Thriving School has three components for students to succeed. They are the structures, the people, and finally the mission of the school. And that mission serves as the glue, that binding agent to bring people together. Let's first look at structures. In terms of the structures, it's the size and the intentionality of our programming. We have about 210 students in our school. Your child will be known and their experience personalized. Education does not occur in a big department store. That's good for grocery shopping, but not for education. The intentionality refers to the structures we have in place to meet the needs of the students. I will share one example of those structures at work. Our teachers meet as grade level teams to identify the needs of our students. These grade level teams meet once a week and they look at the students and they look at solutions for the needs of the students that come up during that week. That's great. So each week we have this built in system to make sure that no one's falling through. Now let's get into the other component, the people of the school. Our faculty and staff have been graduates of some of the finest colleges and universities in the world. Boston College, Harvard, Boston University, and the UMass system. About three quarters of our staff hold advanced degrees uh, on top of their college degrees. 
They are a research-driven group committed to using the best practices in education. So we want to know the best educational trends, and we use them. Third component is the mission. The mission is the glue that allows the structures and people to come together. Our first-rate faculty and staff understand the following concept. Relationship is the foundation of a child's education experience. A child must first and foremost know that they are known and cared for. How is this manifested? When you walk our hallways, you will hear our teachers calling the children by their names. Because after all, the sweetest sound to anyone is the sound of their own name. Beyond calling the children by their names, here's some other examples. Our ninth grade English teacher spends several hours after school working with the students on their essay, as well as mentoring them. Our math teachers took it upon themselves to give their kids math preparation for their SAT and PSAT exams that occurred this October. And yes, we just got those results. We had the largest growth in our school's history in recent years. During this pandemic, we had our largest growth in PSAT and SAT scores. Our theology teacher and campus minister attended every single sporting event last year and would not leave the field or arena until he knew every student had arrived back to their homes. Our science teachers are moderators of running clubs and robotics clubs. I find, but finally, let's think about why the structure in terms of why we do this. We do this with an interdisciplinary approach. We are preparing our students to do endure, flourish, and do good and necessary work in a world that is becoming increasingly more challenging. While it's hard to pinpoint those, what those exact challenges will be, what is known is that to meet those challenges, students must be able to thrive in the interconnectedness that now exists in society, both horizontally and vertically. Consider the following example. The United States economy is intimately integrated with the economies of the rest of the world. Society no longer consists of silos that exist side by side. The education setting should reflect the interconnectedness of the world of which, of which they'll be joining or that workforce they will be joining in four years. The components, the structures, the people, and the mission combined with our signature program of corporate work study create a space for our students to get into some of the finest colleges and universities in the world. And not only get in there and thrive while they're there. I'll end with a saying that we use here at Crystal Ray, and that is we are CRB. So I can't wait to see you become part of the we. We are CRB. I will turn this back over to Ms. Malika. Thank you, Mr. Ryan. At this point, Marlene, I'll have you advance to the next slide. And at this point, we will share some remarks from one of our current students, Janassi. She's a fantastic student and just one example of all the great students we have in our community. So Marlene, I'll ask you to hit play. Hi, my name is Janassi Soto. I'm a senior at Chris Ray Boston. So I'll be graduating June 2021. One of the most memorable moments I had at Chris Ray Boston will be my first day of work. Crystal Ray Boston does an amazing job giving students the opportunity to gain real work experience. Through corporate work study, I learned about my goals in life and where I saw myself five to 10 years. Entering high school, I thought I wanted to become a lawyer, but through my classes, I realized I had an interest in science. My dream school is MCPHS. What makes my experience at Crystal Ray Boston valuable and I would forever hold is that every student who attends and every member who goes to Crystal Ray Boston shapes our community as a whole. I wish you luck. Very nice to meet you and I hope you get in. Bye. And I will share on behalf of Janassi, she is truly excited to get to know all of our applicants and even more exciting, she did get accepted into her top school. So those college acceptances are rolling in and you'll meet both uh, Ms. Berto and Mr. Torres later tonight to talk about our college counseling office, but exciting things happening at Crystal Ray Boston. So at this time, I know we do have a good number of um, interested students here. So if you're comfortable, I would invite you to turn on your video and or your microphone just to introduce yourself. We would just like to put a face to a name or a voice to a name. So at this point, if you're an attendee interested in Krista Ray, you're um, welcome to introduce yourself. So we'll give folks a couple minutes.
I recognize some of the names on this call. So I already know some of you, but my colleagues uh, may not know you yet. I see some videos. So I see a Gianna. It's nice to see you. And Mary. And Desiree. Nani, it's wonderful to see you here tonight. We had a great conversation this week. Who else is joining us tonight? Tammy, I see Tammy's name here. We had a great conversation. All right. So we hope to get to know you in um, more uh, individual settings um, soon and through the application process, but truly thank you all and your family for joining us this evening. So at this point, we are going to Hi, my name. Go ahead. Whoever Sorry, that was, that was a video. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Thanks, Marlene. Just so nice. It plays whenever I go out to the next slide. Sorry. <laughs> so at this point, we will continue on and get to know our community members. So the next few speakers will give you a great overview of the most important aspects of the student and academic experience at Crystal Ray. So at this point, it is my pleasure to introduce Kyle Mullins, who is our Dean of Academics. Kyle, you can take it away. Hi everyone, good evening. Uh, thank you so much for being here with us. Uh, like uh, Nicole said at, at the top, um, you know, we wish we were seeing you in person. Uh, open house is always one of my favorite times of the year, um, but I'm very glad that you could be here with us tonight. Uh, I'm excited to tell you a little bit about uh, our academics here at CRB. So the first thing to know is that uh, CRB offers a college preparatory curriculum. Uh, this basically means that we provide students with a strong foundation in English, math, science, humanities, the Spanish language, uh, as well as art. Um, these are all courses that are designed to prepare you to be successful in college and later on in your career. Um, my background when I was a classroom teacher was in English, so let me first start by telling you a little bit about our English curriculum. Um, our, our courses uh, in the English department include uh, a survey of different genres of literature, uh, as well with a focus on argumentative writing, uh, an American literature course, um, and it culminates in the opportunity for students to take the advanced placement exam in English language and composition during their senior year. On the math side, um, students typically begin by taking either Algebra 1 or Algebra 2, depending on the math courses that they've had in their middle school. Uh, by senior year, students have the opportunity to take either pre-calculus or the advanced placement exam and course in calculus. On the humanities side, students study a mix of theology courses such as world religions and ethics, um, as well as history courses, um, such as one called social justice in America. In senior year, uh, students have a couple of options uh, in the advanced placement track. Uh, they can take advanced placement psychology or the advanced placement course in the United States government. In the sciences, students take a fairly common sequence of physics, biology, and chemistry in their freshman, sophomore, and junior year. In their senior year, students can choose to study either the advanced placement course in environmental science uh, or human anatomy and physiology. Um, beyond those course offerings, we also have a robotics club where students can gain hands-on experience uh, in designing robots and coding uh, and have a chance to go compete against other schools in competition. Uh, in foreign language, all students take at least two years of Spanish language and culture and have the opportunity to take the advanced placement exam and course in Spanish uh, as either juniors or seniors, uh, depending on the level of Spanish language that they came into CRB with. Finally, all students take at least two half-year courses in art um, and also have the opportunity to take the advanced placement course in a uh, drawing studio, which is a full year course uh, during their senior year. On top of all of that, uh, we also offer courses in learning lab and advisory to ninth and 10th grade, uh, which you'll hear a little bit more about from our counseling department later. Uh, also, in senior year, students take a course called Senior Capstone. During the first part of the year, uh, that class helps prepare students for the college process. Um, and in the second semester, uh, it focuses on uh, students completing a self-directed research project. Uh, this year, we have students studying things independently, ranging from uh, environmental science uh, to American Sign Language. Um, Basically, whatever you're interested in, uh, we will find resources to help you do the research and learn more about it. Uh, I know that was a lot that I just threw at you, 
Um, I'd be very happy to answer any questions that you have uh, in just a few moments. And you can uh, send those in the chat uh, to Ms. Via, and she'll be able to pass those on in just a little bit. Uh, again, thank you very much for being with us. Um, I'm going to turn things over to one of our amazing teachers, uh, Ms. Caitlin Gemma. Caitlin? Thank you. Hi, hi, my name is Caitlin Gemmon. I'm a teacher here at CRB. I teach the Sacred Scriptures course to the sophomores, and I teach the Social Justice in America course to the juniors. Additionally, I'm one of the coaches for the After School Running Club. Um, what first drew me to want to teach at Chris Ray Boston was the amazing sense of community at the school. Even in the world today where everyone has to stay six feet apart and some of our students cannot learn in person, the school community remains strong. And I think this is because everyone at Christa Ray Boston truly cares about one another. Students help and support each other. Our teachers and faculty care so much about students' success and well-being both in and outside of the classroom. And in addition to that, students at Christa Ray Boston care so much about the world around them and making the world a better place. I've witnessed this in particular in teaching the Social Justice in America course. One of the reasons I wanted to become a teacher is because I believe that through education, our world can be a better place. And I've seen this to be true um, through the students I teach here at Christa Ray Boston, who are truly passionate about social justice and creating positive change in the world. Overall, I feel so lucky to teach here and am inspired every day by my students. And I'll turn it over to um, Mike Hoffman. Thanks, Caitlin. Uh, my name is Mike Kaufman. Uh, I've been teaching here at Christa Ray Boston for 10 years uh, since we actually started in Dorchester. Uh, I was here the same year that began. Uh, my Christa Ray journey actually began in Chicago after I graduated from college, where I was volunteering uh, for a two year stint teaching and driving a school bus that would deliver students to their work study jobs, trying to figure out what it was I actually wanted to do with my life. Um, I pretty quickly eliminated the bus driving from a possibility. I was not very good at it, and the Chicago Transit Authority, in fact, told me I should never do it again. So that was an easy decision. Uh, but what surprised me was how much I loved teaching, and I quickly realized I couldn't see myself doing anything else. And truly, in the 10 years that I've been working here in Christa Ray Boston, one thing I can certainly say is I have never, ever been bored for 10 straight years. And I think that's a real blessing when you think about how much of our life we spend looking for excitement and thrill. Um, I get to have that every day at my job. And the primary factor that drives that is our students. Um, I have been in other schools, I have friends at other schools, uh, I visit schools and my friends whenever I travel around the country, and I never see or encounter students anything quite like ours. Uh, the level of curiosity that they have, the passion they bring for learning, and as Ms. Gemma said, for really making an impact in the world, makes it an absolute joy to have them in the classroom and a privilege that I do not take lightly. And one of the reasons I love working at Christa Ray Boston is that no one around us takes it lightly either. It's something that humbles all of us and something that we are uh, thrilled to be able to do. And I look forward, I guess, to the next 10 years as well. Uh, and then I guess Ms. Pedersen, you're coming up after me. Talk about science a bit. I believe Ms. Pedersen had oh. something come. I don't think her, her Zoom account was working or something with the internet these days with our Zoom accounts, but we will be sure that you all can connect with Ms. Pedersen at a later time. Um, what Ms. Pedersen and Ms. Schema um, organize our running club. So they, they keep us all busy and motivated and inspired on a daily basis. <laughs> so um, at this point, uh, Ms. V, I'll ask you um, if there are any questions that we can pose um, to Mr. Mullins, Ms. Gemma, or Mr. Kaufman. Yeah, so there's a question. Um, what is an AP class? Sure, I, I can answer that one. So the advanced placement courses uh, are courses that are designed by the college board. Uh, the advanced placement courses allow students to study a subject at a college level while they're still in high school. Uh, and if they achieve a certain score on the advanced placement exams, they can actually earn college credit. Uh, so all of our students at CRB take at least one advanced placement course uh, during their senior year. Uh, but many students opt to take three or four, uh, which gives them, again, the opportunity to, uh, to actually get a head start on their college careers while they're, while they're uh, still here at our school. 
Any other questions, Ms. Fia, for academics while we're here? That's it for now. All right. So again, to any of our attendees, if you have questions that you think of, please feel free to continue to send them along to Ms. Fia and we'll pose them at the end of our session. At this time, I'd like to transition over to our corporate work study program, which is the most identifiable characteristic of our Crystal Ray education. And tonight we have um, Paul Bowen. So Paul, I, I invite you to our virtual stage um, and to share with us a little more about the corporate work study program here at CRB. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I am Paul Bowen. I'm the director of Corporate Work Study. And in a minute, I'm going to give you an overview of our program. But before I do, I have a question for you, particularly for you students that are with us tonight. And my question is this. 10 years from now, if you could have any job in Boston, any job that exists, or maybe even a job that doesn't even exist yet, but if you could have any job at all 10 years from now, what would it be? And if anybody wants to unmute their mic and share with us, uh, you don't have to. You can also put it in the chat, or maybe you want to think about it as I go through my overview. But would anyone like to unmute mute their mic and just share with us? If you could have any job at all 10 years from now, what would it be? All right. Well, if you want to think about it, please do. And uh, if you want to put it in the chat, uh, we welcome that as well. Uh, the signature component of our Crystal Ray Boston High School is our Corporate Work Study program. And students will participate in Corporate Work Study all four years that you are here at our school. And students graduate from, from Crista Ray Boston with the knowledge and the skills and the character that they need to make meaningful and lasting impacts in our Boston community. We are the only high school in the Boston area where all students have the opportunity to participate in a work study program all four years of high school. And evidence from our corporate work study alumni shows that Crystal Ray Boston students graduate both college ready and career prepared. Their experience working in leading Boston firms is a major component in both their college readiness as well as their career preparedness. Here at Crystal Ray Boston, our core values are dignity, perseverance, growth, and generosity. These values shape the formation of our students, and the process of internalizing these values is essential to each one of our students becoming both college ready and career prepared. Since Crystal Ray Boston moved to Dorchester in 2010, corporate work study has played an essential role in accomplishing this by providing students with real world transferable skills and by introducing them to successful professionals and work environments that encourage them to work hard, to grow in their dignity, grow in their perseverance, grow in their generosity, and to dream big. The Corporate Work Study Program is a means of giving students crucial hands-on entry-level work experience while simultaneously empowering students to take an active part in their own education. Through four years of corporate work study participation, students will acquire the following things. First, increased self-esteem and a strong work ethic. Second, valuable job experience and marketable skills. Third, exposure to a wide range of work environments. Fourth, valuable business contacts and career opportunities. And finally, fifth, experience in interacting with adults in a professional workplace atmosphere. So that's my overview of corporate work study. And I'm wondering right now if any of you have any questions. So one of our attendees said that she wants to be a pedi pediatrician. Fantastic. Healthcare is one of our biggest sectors that our students work in. Um, our biggest sector is law. We have more students working in law firms than anything else, but our second sec largest sector is finance, and our third largest sector is healthcare. So before COVID, we had dozens of students working in some of the top hospitals in Boston, as well as in some local community health centers as well. So there's a lot of opportunities for exposure into the medical field, uh, including some of our top hospitals in the city. Any other questions? Yes, we have a question here. Um, can you choose your work placement? 
Great question. Um, during the summer, we have a foundations onboarding job training program that you go through. And when you finish your onboarding training, you do a very comprehensive survey where you tell us about your skills and your interest and the kinds of companies you want to work in. We do take that into account. But honestly, the seniors get first choice because they're the, it's their last year here. And after they leave senior year, they're off to college, right? So the older you get, the closer you get to your senior year, the more choices you have. You can tell us your choices and your preferences every year, and we try our best to match them as best as we realistically can. But the older you get, the more choices you get. Great. Thank you so much, Paul. At this time, we'll start to talk about another hallmark of a high school um, experience is athletics and extracurricular activities. So at this point, I would like to welcome Dan Curran, who is our Director of Athletics. Dan? Good evening, everybody. It's an honor to be here with you tonight. And I want to extend a special welcome to the, student the future student athletes who are joining us. Uh, my name is Dan Curran. I have the privilege of being the Director of Athletics here at Crystal Ray Boston. Uh, Crystal Ray is a proud member of the MIAA, which is the Massachusetts Interscholastic Athletic Association, and the Catholic Central League. Uh, we currently sponsor 10 sports, including boys soccer, girls soccer, girls volleyball, football, girls basketball, cheerleading, softball, baseball, um, and men's basketball, which competes in the CCL Large, which is the most competitive league right now in the state. And coming soon in the spring of 2021, we'll be offering tennis programs for both boys and girls. Many of our sports compete as part of a cooperative agreement with Cathedral High School. This partnership has only multiplied the opportunities for our student athletes. We're fortunate enough to have some excellent local partners that make it possible for our student athletes to utilize college level facilities in the area. These facilities include Rodge Park at Emerson College. This houses our soccer and softball programs and our basketball teams practice at the Dana Barrow Center just down the road. In 2019, Crystal Ray was fortunate enough to join the Adidas family of schools. This gives our student athletes access to top of the line uniforms and team apparel. Equally as important are the student clubs and organizations here at Crystal Ray. We currently offer National Honor Society for the students who qualify during their junior and senior year, robotics, a running club, chess, business, a social justice student voice association, yoga, and many, many more. All clubs are, or, and organizations are conducted in a manner that allows participation for both in-person and remote students. And with that, if anyone has any questions, I'd love to answer them. Yes, we have one question. How often do athletic teams practice? So you can expect at the varsity level to have some type of athletic commitment six days a week. Um, for example, I'll use our basketball schedule. Our team practices um, for basketball in the mornings before school. So they'll practice any day, Monday through Friday, when they don't have a game um, for roughly an hour and a half to two hours. Um, the students will then attend school. And after school, we have a um, guided academic time and, and tutoring session. Um, on game nights, they come to school, they jump on the bus, we go to the game, we come back, we let them get some rest. Um, but I would plan on any given day, Monday through Saturday, between two to three hours of a commitment to the athletic program, both on the court or in study hall. Awesome, thank you, Dan. Marlene, any other athletic questions before we continue on? Not at the moment. All right, great. So at this, um, at this point, I'd like to welcome my colleague, Tanya Fortz, who is our Director of Counseling Services at Crystal Ray. And Tanya will share a little bit more about the counseling department and the services that we offer to our students. Tanya? Thank you, Ms. Malika. So I am Tanya Fortz, I'm the Director of Counseling and Operation here at Crystal Ray Boston. And thank you all for joining us on this Thursday night. So in the Guidance Department at Crystal Ray, we provide direct services to the entire student body. So we have weekly meetings, sometimes bi-weekly, to discuss successes and challenges both inside and outside of the classroom. And we collaborate with teachers to help ensure students can accomplish their academic successes, achievements, social emotional development, and career readiness. 
we communicate with all stakeholders on a regular basis. I know Principal Ryan earlier said we have weekly team meetings, so we're constantly in contact. All um, team members always looking forward to your best interest, your child's best interest. So we cater to the students whom are completely remote and in person currently right now due to the pandemic. So we really focus on social emotional learning in the guidance department, which is the process to understand and manage emotions, set and achieve goals, feel and show empathy for others, maintain positive relationships, and make responsible decisions. And as Kyle Mullins mentioned earlier, we have two new courses this year that are new and they are called advisory and learning lab and they focus on social emotional learning and executive functioning skills. So these are for our underclassmen right now, they're offered to our freshmen and sophomores. So for advisory, we follow a CASEL framework, which is the collaborative for academic, social and emotional learning. And so there's five comp competencies within. There is self-awareness, social awareness, responsible decision-making, self-management and relationship skills. And right now in Learning Lab, we are focusing on executive functioning skills, both inside and outside of the classroom. And it's a set of mental skills, including working memory, flexible thinking, and self-control. Students focus on topics including organization, starting, finishing, and staying focused on tasks, self-monitoring, study skills, time management, goal setting, and strategies to further their academic growth. So within the guidance department, we're really here in case you yourself as a student are just struggling, you're having a bad day, you need help organize, organize, organizing excuse me, your assignments due for the week. We're here to help you be that other person to bounce ideas off of, help you get the resources you need, maybe a virtual agenda to write down what you need or print out a calendar and write when your projects and tests are due. So we're here just for you. We're not here to get you, um, in trouble, maybe we might talk to you. We will definitely talk to you about your grades, but we're not gonna harp on you for anything you're doing. We just wanna be someone in the building that you can come to that's gonna have your back and always look for your best interest. So we're always gonna put the students' needs first in the guidance department. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Fortz. Ms. Fia, any questions for Ms. Fortz about guidance counseling? Uh, yes, we have one that says, do you have the same guidance counselor your entire time at CRB? So in the past, um, that has not been the case, but we are working right now on a, to follow the, to follow the um, grades as they progress. So with hopes that you build a rapport with your guidance counselor, maybe freshman or sophomore year, and then you progress with your same counselor. So they'll know you for all four years. That's wonderful. Thank you, Ms. Sports. The other side of our counseling department includes our college counseling department with Ms. Rateau and Mr. Torres. Our students are as successful as they are because of the hard, hard work that Ms. Rateau and Mr. Torres do. So at this time, I would like to turn it over to them. Hi, everyone. Good evening, students and parents, and welcome to Crystal Ray Boston's Open House. My name is Debbie Rito, and I am the director of, the, of college counseling at Crystal Ray Boston, working closely with Victor Torres, who works as the college counselor slash alumni advisor. As you've probably noticed, college is at the forefront of everything that we do here at Crystal Ray, and that begins as early for students as the ninth grade. Starting in the ninth grade, students are already taking rigorous AP and honors courses, um, and throughout their 9th, 10th, and 11th grade, they're engaging in college workshops, presentations, fairs, and field trips. During the 11th and 12th grade year, juniors and seniors have specific time carved out in their schedules where they're focusing solely on different aspects of the college application process. So we support students with creating their college list, ensuring that they have target, reach, and likely schools, we support students with the financial aid applications, as well as registering for the SATs and the ACTs. We do provide each of our students with waivers so they don't have to worry about the fees that are associated with taking the SATs. We do try to eliminate those sort of financial barriers for our students. Um, we also provide them with a database that consists of different scholarships that they can apply to. Um, 
who help with college essay, with helping them to collect their recommendation letters. Um, we work with every piece of the college application process until students are ready to make a decision. And at that point, we are involving families. We're having conversations about what is affordable and what makes sense for the student. Um, so we're working with them from the very beginning until the end. Um, and within our college department, the end does not mean when a student makes a decision. They actually continue to receive support after they graduate um, and transition into college, and it persists. Um, and that's where my colleague, Mr. Torres, comes into play. And he'll talk to you a little bit more about his alumni advising role. Thank you for that, Debbie. Hey, Nicole, can you hear me well, just to make sure? Loud and clear. Thanks, Victor. Perfect. Uh, hey, family. My name is Victor Torres. Um, I am the alumni advisor uh, slash college counselor at Chris Ray Boston. I've been here at Chris Ray for three years now, um, mainly as the alumni advisor, but this year I've been handed the added role as the um, college counselor, working closely with Ms. Uh, Rateau, who you just heard from, uh, supporting all the students. Mostly seniors meet the deadlines to apply to colleges, scholarships, and financial aid. Um, as you've heard through most of the night, you know, we at Crystal Ray, we take pride in making sure all of our students not only get accepted to college, but completing that process and graduating college, uh, which leads me into, you know, my other role that I mentioned to you earlier as the alumni advisor. Uh, my main goal as the alumni advisor is to promote college persistence through academics, financial aid, and personal advising. Um, essentially making sure your kids, when they're off to these big colleges, feel supported and get the support that they need on campus to stay motivated, not only to stay enrolled, but also to graduate as well. So uh, that's it for me. I just want to thank you guys for you know, taking the time to meet with us, and I look forward to meeting you, your kids, and supporting them through the whole college process. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Torres and Ms. Rateau. Uh, Ms. Villa, anything for college counseling? Any questions that may have come up? Yes, we have a question. How do students know where to apply to college? So at the very beginning of senior year, and actually we work with students um, towards the end of the junior year, we use different search engines to help students um, create a college list. And so they take into consideration things like their GPA, their major that they're interested in, the environment that they want to be in. Um, they enter all that into a website that we commonly use, which is the College Board website. Um, and that will generate a list of colleges that will meet the students' needs. Um, and students will also get advice from Mr. Torres and myself um, about good fit. We also encourage students to add schools to their list that they maybe have thought about before because as we said we do communicate with students all throughout high school and hopefully by senior year they have already established some ideas um, but we do use the college board website and our own council to help students with their list great thank you debbie so we have about uh, one larger section left of this uh, program, just about applying to Krista Ray. Um, but I would like to remind you, thank you all for submitting some great questions so far. Um, as you keep thinking of them, please feel free to send them along in the chat. Um, and Ms. Villa will address them after the application process. So we will have a general Q&A at the end. Um, so I know that you are all here because you're interested in Krista Ray. We are so excited you're interested in joining our community. Uh, but before you join the community, you need to apply. So let's talk about that process quickly. Again, any questions that come up during, during the section, please feel free to send them in the chat. Um, so the first step in applying to Krista Ray Boston is confirming your eligibility. And there are four different um, ways that we need you to confirm your eligibility. Each applicant uh, must be a rising ninth or 10th grader for the next academic year. So that is 2021 to 2022. The student must also be 14 years old by September 1st. The student must have a valid social security card or have legal status to work in the United States with the supporting legal documentation to verify that. And last but not least, the applicant must be financially eligible. As we mentioned at the beginning of the session, we um, are serving families with um, limited um, income or you know, facing economic hardships. So we want to make sure that we are serving the students um, that, that need um, our, our support and our education. So again, those four bullet points, um, each student must um, confirm their eligibility that way. 
you have any questions about those four bullet points, please don't hesitate to reach out to us either via email, phone, um, or Zoom, whatever is most comfortable for you. So I'm just going to advance to this next slide. Um, this is about our inquiry form. So if you have your phone um, readily available beside you, I invite you to take your phone out and scan that QR code. That QR code is going to bring you to that inquiry form um, page, which you'll see a screenshot here on the, on the PowerPoint. An inquiry form is just collecting your contact information so we can continue to communicate with you. You'll get emails, you'll get notices about application deadlines, upcoming events. Um, so it really allows us to get to know you better during the application process. So um, please um, make sure that you are filling out this form. Some of you I know have already done that, which is fantastic, uh, but this is a great thing to do check off the list later tonight or definitely this week so we can stay in contact with you. Our next slide is talking about our application deadline. So in order to apply to Crystal Ray Boston, you need to complete an online application. Um, that online application is through our system called FAX. What I do like to remind folks is that I encourage you to use an email address that you will have access to for the duration of the academic year. So that may be an email address of a parent or a family member that is able to check it consistently, but just make sure that the email address you are listing on your application is one that you can have access to through the summer until you become or enroll um, as a Crystal Ray student. So on this chart here, you'll see our two um, application deadline. So the first one is coming up. The first one is uh, January 1st, and that is our early decision deadline. If you apply by uh, January 1st and your application is complete, you've submitted all your materials, which we'll get to in just a couple minutes, and you will receive your decision within a month by that first week in February. There is another de uh, deadline, excuse me, and that is February 15th. There is no difference between the two deadlines other than one is earlier than the other. So as soon as you have all your materials ready and you're ready to hit submit on that online application, um, we invite you to do so. Uh, but our two deadlines are January 1st and January 15th. We understand that some of you may not know or may not have um, the ability to submit your application and make it complete by those two deadlines. So we do have rolling decision. So anything after February 15th will be considered on a rolling basis. So that just means as soon as we get your application and all your materials, we'll be able to evaluate it. So we do encourage you to apply by January 1st, February 15th. If you have any questions along the way, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. All right, so our next slide here are, is talking about the forms I just referenced as part of the application. So every applicant needs to submit an evaluation from their English teacher, another one from their math teacher, a, another evaluation from their school counselor, and lastly, the transcript. So when you uh, are on our online application, you will submit the name and contact information for your English teacher, your math teacher, and your school counselor. Those three individuals will automatically receive a notification that you have listed them and you need their help in filling out these evaluations. At that point, we, as our office, as our admissions office, we will follow up with your English, math, and school counselor um, individuals, making sure that they submit those evaluations on time. These evaluations just help us to get to know you better as a student, to know what you are like in and out of the classroom, and it helps just paint us a more well-rounded and fuller picture. The last part of the application process is the admissions interview. So I know interview can be a intimidating word, but it really is just a conversation. It's just, it'll be you and I on Zoom and it'll be an opportunity for me to get to know you better as a student. I really enjoy meeting with students individually and putting faces to names. So um, the interview is just a way for me to learn about you. What is your favorite subject? How do you do in school? You know, what are your hobbies outside of school? Um, what are you most um, excited about you know, as you begin your high school education? So this is just an opportunity to have a conversation with me um, and it really helps us get to know you better as a student. So I, I remind you, don't be too intimidated by the word interview. It really is just a conversation. And last but not least, there is the financial aspect of a Crystal Ray education. So we are a private Catholic high school and there is tuition um, to attend Crystal Ray. Our sticker price, so to speak, is about $18,000 a year. Um, if you remember at the beginning of our 
closer to the beginning of this session, we heard from Mr. Paul Bowen, who talked about our corporate work study program. The partners that we have through that program um, contribute about half of each student's tuition. So right off the bat, each student, your sticker price, so to speak, is already down to 9,000. Because we need to screen and ensure that each of our applicants and students are um, eligible financially, each student and family will receive a good amount of financial aid. On average, I, I'll, I'll share, on average, um, our families are paying about $700 a year. So that is for the whole academic year, and that is including textbooks, materials, and any fees associated with your education. That, uh, that average, the, the number I just shared, the 700, we also have multiple payment plans available for family. So um, our business office is fantastic. So our colleagues of Celia and Carla, their names and their phone numbers are listed on the slide and they are fantastic at working with our families individually. So they will work with you when the time comes and determine what payment plan makes the most sense for the student and the student's family. With that being said, we um, do not require applicants to fill out the financial aid form um, as part of the application process. You will fill out that financial aid form once you are accepted to Crystal Ray. So once you are accepted to Crystal Ray, we will be in contact with you and we will give you all the information that you'll need in order to fill out that financial aid form. And you'll see some more information there about when you'll need to complete it based upon when you applied. I know that was a lot of information. It's a lot of information to share. It's probably a lot of information to hear. Um, so I'm wondering, Marlene, if anyone had submitted any questions, whether it's about the application process, whether it's about any of the other subjects and topics that we discussed earlier tonight. Yes, we have a question. Is there an application fee? It's a great question. It's something I should have mentioned. <laughs> so is no um, there's no fee to apply to Crystal Ray Boston. Um, the only fee component of the application process is once you are accepted, there is a fee to submit the financial aid form, but there is no fee to apply, um, so no risk whatsoever. Great question. Any others? And again, if you are a student on this call and you prefer to speak out loud and use your microphone, you are absolutely welcome to do that. Hi. Um, Hi. We do you have transportation? Um, what train station uh, is closest and do you shuttle at all? That is a fantastic question and again one I should have mentioned so um, I will answer the first part and then Mr. Ryan I'm going to turn to you to answer um, and provide some information about transportation to work study. But the Seven Hills stop on the red line is about a 45 second walk across the street from our school. So very convenient that our students use that train station all the time, as well as a lot of local buses. But we are very convenient in that sense. Um, Mr. Ryan, I know, do you want to provide some information about transportation to work study? Sure, yes, thank you, Ms. Malika. So we do provide the transportation to the work study site. Uh, we also try, we're mindful of providing work study sites that are easily accessible by public transportation. But in the event that um, public transportation is not available, um, we do that. We also, as for the younger students, they actually have to check in at the school uh, before they then go off to uh, their work study site. Thank you for that question. Any other questions? Again, feel free to turn on your mic. Thank you. Of course. We do have a question on the chat um, okay. and it's, do we have a school uniform? That is a great question. Um, let's see, I know Mr. Laporte is here. Mr. Laporte, would you like to take that question and to quickly introduce yourself? Um, first and foremost, I would like to say happy holidays to everyone um, on behalf of Crystal Ray. Um, uh, my name is Freddie Laporte. I am the director of, of, um, of discipline. Um, um, sorry about that. Um, lost the train of thought here. Um, and yes, we do have a uniform policy. Uh, typically we wear, um, khaki pants, um, whether gray or typical, like the traditional brown. We have, we wear polos and we have a traditional sweater as well. Um, um, typical dress shoes, or if you were to wear sneakers, I get out. I'm a young man as well. Um, traditional black, all black sneakers. 
Um, looking forward to meeting you guys in the near future. Um, also continue to guide you guys um, navigating through high school and as well as college as well. Thank you all. Great question and thank you, Mr. Laporte. Any other questions tonight? We do have a few minutes remaining. We have another question here um, sure. and it says, can I come to the school to see the building and the students? I wish that answer were yes and I wish I could tell you that right now. Um, unfortunately, due to COVID, we are not having any visitors um, at our building, but let's knock on wood, cross our fingers and our toes that that situation may change in the springtime. Um, so for the time being, we are offering just virtual visits and ways to engage with us. Um, however, whoever that student is that asked that question, please um, note our email address and phone number on the slide and give us a call. Um, we have admissions ambassadors at our school and they are current students who are so eager to talk to our applicants and share what they love about school. So we are um, so we're available to you know show you virtually what our school looks like we could walk from classroom to classroom if you'd like or if you'd just like to hop on a zoom call with a current student and kind of get to know the student experience we are more than happy to do that so that's a great question and i really do wish we could have visitors right now but that is on hold for the moment anything else these are great questions great conversation we do have another question. Um, and they're just asking about the tuition. What is the tuition at Crystal Ray? Sure, um, Ms. Fia, do you wanna go back to that slide for a moment? And I can follow up with um, this family individually and give you some more context. And I'm also happy to connect you or anyone rather with our business office, uh, Ms. Williams and Ms. Austin here um, listed at the bottom of the page. But again, that $18,000 is the sticker price of a tuition or education at um, Crystal Ray Boston. Again, about half of that tuition, um, that bill is covered from our corporate work study partner. So um, Mr. Paul Bowen spoke earlier and the corporate work study office does fantastic work in not only finding partners and jobs for our students, but those partners also contribute in um, financially to our, to our institution and to our students. Um, Again, once you are accepted to Crystal Ray, then you will apply for the financial aid. And that part is, it's an, um, I wouldn't say an extensive process, but um, Carla and Celia listed here are more than happy to walk you through that process with you. When that's all said and done, so you take your sticker price, you subtract the um, funding from corporate work study, you subtract the financial aid, on average, our families are only paying about $700 annually. Again, that $700 average price, um, our families can choose up to, I believe we have four right now payment options, but our business office, we will work with you and your family individually to figure out what payment plan is best for you. So uh, we will continue to have these individual conversations. Don't hesitate to reach out. Um, we want to make sure that our CRISPR education is affordable for all of our families. So we have another question. Um, is there a theater club or an acting club? Hmm. Uh, Mr. Curran, can I uh, have you answer that question? We're currently in the process of forming up some of our clubs and activities. Um, there's some new clubs coming online. If that's an interest of yours, we can definitely pair you up. I know in the past there's been interest in it. Um, our campus minister, Mr. Heald, has been rumored to be involved with in that as well. Um, and I'm sure we can make something go. Great, thank you. Great question. Anything else? So we have another one here in the chat that I always get um, in my virtual visits yeah. to schools. What are the lunch options at Crystal Ray? That is a very popular question, <laughs> isn't it? Um, yes. Christia, what is your go-to answer for that when you meet with our students virtually? Well, I know that in the past we've had like really great um, pasta options. I know today we had a chicken sandwich with french fries. Um, I'm trying to remember other lunch options that we had. I know we had chicken wings at one point. <laughs> we did have a Thanksgiving lunch, I believe, yes. right before the holiday. Correct. Yeah, this is a very popular question. Thank you, Ms. Via. Awesome. Yeah. 
All right. Anything else? Any other questions? This is fantastic. I love this conversation. Yes, we have another question. Do we require test scores? Great question. And no, not as part of the application process. Um, once students are admitted, um, we do have um, placement exams and make sure that you are put in the right courses your freshman year. Um, but no, um, no exams as part of the application process. I know some of you may be taking a high school placement exam um, for other needs and we're happy to look at those, but it's not required as part of our application process. And then another question here in the chat, um, two questions. Ooh. Are there students in the school or in the building? And the other question is, what is an average day for a ninth grader? Ooh, those are great, great questions. Maybe that first question I'll have Mr. Ryan address and then we'll have you pose a second question again after, after he answers. So what, um, are there students in the building, Mr. Ryan? Yeah, so we created a schedule that allowed students to be, that can, come to our building, be in our building, but students that need to be remote due to their family circumstances or health reasons can learn remote. And it also has allowed us to pivot to remote learning during weeks when we need to go remote. Uh, for example, we did it the week after Thanksgiving, feeling that it was coming off the Thanksgiving holiday. We felt the need that that was a remote week uh, for health and safety reasons. But we have been both in person and remote and when we are in person we have the option of staying remote uh, due to any either family or health reasons thank you mr ryan and was that second question as was it what is a normal day for a ninth grader yes all right i'm going to ask mr mullins to talk about the academic side and then i'll bring in miss forts if you want to talk about the counseling side sure happy to um, so like Mr. Ryan said, this year is a little bit different uh, because we have created the schedule that allows students to be both live in the building or remote if they need to be. Um, but the basic schedule looks a little bit like this. So freshmen take six courses and all of those courses meet every day. Um, in this year's schedule, in the morning, uh, students will have three 50-minute classes, uh, then a lunch break, and then followed by three 30-minute classes. So if say that were today, that was your schedule on Thursday, tomorrow your schedule will be flipped and the classes that you had for 30 minutes would be for 50 minutes and the classes you had for 50 minutes would be for 30 minutes in the afternoon. Uh, and also every day after school, in addition to the club options, um, our teachers stay around for at least a half hour after school uh, for something we call office hours. Uh, office hours are a time if you want to get help on a homework assignment from a teacher, um, maybe go to a study session before an assessment. Um, and these office hours, teachers will often schedule individually with students too. So if you're, for example, going to running club at three o'clock, but you wanna see your, your English teacher, um, you could reach out to your English teacher and he would be able to schedule a meeting with you uh, sometime later in the afternoon or now that we're all really good at Zoom, uh, maybe even in the evening as well. Ms. Forrest, did you want to add anything from the counseling side? Maybe when um, guidance, when ninth graders interact and meet with their guidance counselors? Sure. So um, we do guidance all the time has appointments and an open door policy during before classes in the morning, during lunch, and of course after school. And then on um, you can either chat us and we also use um, Google Voice numbers to um, throughout the evening. But we always have an open door policy. So if there is something going on where you don't feel comfortable being in class or you'd really like to talk to someone about something, you can tell your teacher and you can come to our office and we're there for you. And if you come in between classes and we just catch up for five minutes and you might be missing a little bit of your first period, we reach out to your teacher and let them know that you are here, you are in the building and you're just with us and we'll send you down momentarily so you don't miss class. So we always have an open door policy. We're always here for you and um, we'll always make time to meet with you. Thank you. Any other questions, Ms. Fia? I do wanna be respectful of folks' time, so we have about another minute. Yes, my name is Amaya Paul. Um, I was wondering if you have a class program at your school. If we have a lacrosse program? Art program. Art program? 
All right, cool. Sorry, I couldn't hear you for a moment. So my apologies. I want to make sure we were addressing your question, Desiree. Um, Mr. Mullins, do you want to address that and maybe share a little bit about our, our classes at Crystal Ray? Sure. So uh, during first semester of freshman year, all students uh, take an introduction to art. Um, our teacher, our art teacher, uh, Mrs. Edwards, has been at Cristo Ray ooh, probably 15 or 16 years. She is, uh, she's a veteran. She is uh, what often are our students' favorite teachers uh, because they get to explore so many different types of art um, in that freshman class. So from doing, from painting uh, to doing charcoal drawings, um, those are just the two that immediately come to mind. But um, they so get a great survey of art during your uh, freshman year. Then uh, in the second half of your junior year, so 11th grade, um, all students also take an advanced art course where all of those things that you got to practice as freshmen, uh, you get to do at a little bit deeper level. Uh, and then for students who are really excited uh, about the arts, um, there's that chance to take the, the studio art class uh, in senior year. Uh, in addition to that, uh, there are, we often get notices about different competitions that students can enter in the arts. Uh, and so Mrs. Edwards helps students connect to those uh, as well. And Mr. Mullins, while we're on the uh, subject and topic of the arts, there was a, another uh, follow-up question about any music opportunities. Sure, uh, this year with, with COVID, uh, we don't have any music programming happening. Uh, as you might know, uh, choral singing is one of the, the riskiest activities. So we aren't able to have anything uh, with music this year, uh, but next year, uh, similar to what Mr. Curran said about performing arts, uh, hopefully, fingers crossed for a more normal school year next year, um, and we'll be able to roll out some more options uh, in drama and music uh, for after school programs. Thank you. All right, so I think that just about wraps it up for tonight, but um, I am so eager and so excited to see all of you on this call tonight. I cannot wait to have further and follow up conversations with each of you. So please feel free to note our email address, our phone number here and reach out to us at any point. Thank you so much for attending. Um, we look forward to getting to know you um, more during the application process. So um, go Knights. And as Mr. Ryan said earlier, we are CRB. Good night, everyone. <laughs>